for a few weeks under this subject matter. I want to know. Yes, yes. What love, what love is. is. And uh, amen. We've dealt with it. We've talked about it. We've talked about the four types of love that we can find in scripture. We've dealt with some of the attributes. We've dealt with 10 of the 14 attributes of love that are found in 1 Corinthians 13. This morning, if the Lord will allow us, I want to deal with the final four. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we're going to zero in on verse 7. Uh Amen. I know I'm in trouble. It's all right. I've been there before. Amen. Been there before. Been there, done that. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. We've talked about the fact that charity suffered long. We said charity was patient. We said charity was kind. Love was kind. Love doesn't get jealous to the point of destruction. Love doesn't parade itself. It doesn't try to make itself more important than what it really is. It's not puffed up. It doesn't have an attitude of arrogance. Mm. Last Sunday we said that love did not behave itself unseemingly. It didn't act out of control. It doesn't do things out of order. Love does not seek her own. Love doesn't have a personal agenda or a personal motive that it seeks to go after. It puts others before itself. We said last Sunday that love was not easily provoked. In other words, you just can't change love quickly. You don't fall in and out of love. Can I deal with that real quick? Because some of y'all, that's the reason why you keep getting hurt. You keep falling. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I fell in love. That's why you keep getting hurt. You keep falling. You keep falling. You're going to keep falling after a while. You're going to be able to say like that lady on TV, I've fallen and I... Uh-huh. I knew I'd get somebody to remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Love thinks no evil. Love doesn't look for the negativity. Love doesn't look for the moment to try to pull somebody down. Love doesn't look for a moment to make themselves look good and make everybody else look bad. That ain't love. Then we got to verse 6 and said that love did not rejoice in iniquity. Love does not take pleasure in the bad. Love does not take pleasure when folk do things that are wrong. And let me throw this in there for free. I think I told you last Sunday. If I didn't, I'll tell you today. Love doesn't take an opportunity to promote bad. So when you got folks that are trying to work little evil agendas behind closed doors and up under tables and you know it's wrong and don't say nothing about it. You're just as guilty as the one doing the crime. I told y'all I was going to get in trouble today. Love rejoices not in iniquity, but it rejoiceth in the truth. Did I not tell y'all last Sunday that truth was not something, it was someone? I didn't tell y'all that, did I? Yeah, truth is not something, it is someone. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father unless he comes by me. So true love rejoices in things that bring glory and honor to Christ. So if it doesn't bring any glory and honor to Christ, it's a waste of time. Mm, boy, this is good teaching. This is good. So let me get to verse 7. Y'all ready for this? Because in verse 7, you find four things that I want to deal with. Verse 7, Paul says, love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. And with those four things in mind, once again, I want to preach from this thought. I want to know what love is. Now, I know I got some folks in here who've walked with me long enough to say, you know what, I really need to know because there's a whole lot of stuff that I thought was love. I'm finding out really isn't love. Amen, somebody. There's a whole lot of stuff that we actually call the agape love that is not the agape love. True agape love is self-sacrificing love. It's that love that says, I'm going to look past your failure. I'm going to look past your mistakes. I'm going to look beyond your fault and love you anyway. That's the love that a Christian ought to have. And can I tell us for the record, and some of y'all will disagree, but if you know I'm right, say amen. Would you all agree that there are some folks who've got this love thing so twisted that they can say, I love you, and it means nothing from the time it falls from their lips? Have I got some help here? Yeah, because see, when you really love me, it's not in your words. 
It's in the actions that follow. See, true love is not what it says, beloved. It is what it does. You can't say that you love me and then mistreat me. You can't say that you love me and smile in my face and talk behind my back. You can't, you can't say that you love me. Here's the word. Can I give it to you in the word? The word of God says, how can a man say that he loves a God whom he has never seen? But then hates his brother who he sees. What did the Bible say? The Bible said you are a lie. Y'all about to get in trouble. But I know a whole lot of lying folk. Even in the church. Woo, y'all want some good stuff? Go with me to the New Testament. I'm going to teach you today. Amen. So there are four things that Paul says here in this text. Four things he says in verse 7. The first thing he says in verse 7 is what? Love does what? It beareth all things. See, here's the thing about the word bear. The word bear comes from the Greek word meaning to protect. It means to cover. In other words, true love protects. Mm. True love covers. True love preserves. 1 Peter 4 and 8 says, And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity, love does what? Covers a multitude of sin. See, what, what true love does, true love looks at your offenses and it looks at your mistakes and instead of using it to destroy you, it loves you enough to say, I'm going to love you through this. I'm going to protect you through this. I'm going to cover you through this. Can I say it like I really feel it? True love doesn't go out and spread your faults. True love doesn't go out and tell folk there's something wrong with that one. Let me tell you what I heard about them. No, true love says if I can't help them, I won't hurt them. Am I helping somebody today? Yeah, John Luke's gospel, chapter 6, verse 27 and 28. Jesus said it this way. I say unto you, love your enemies. Come on, somebody. Do good to them that hate you and bless them that curse you and pray for them that despitefully use you. Can I get at least 20 Christians that will testify that's a whole lot easier said than done? It's hard to love folk when they are when you know they're mistreating you. Can I get some real Christians in here? It's hard to love folk when you know that they are doing dirt behind your back. It's, it's hard to love folk when you know that they are snakes in the grass. It's hard to love folk when you know that they are smiling in your face when they really want to take your place. It's hard to love them kind of. In other words, it takes some God. It takes some God power. It takes some Holy Ghost power. To the point, is there anybody in here who can testify? Some folk ought to be glad that you got some God in your life. Because if you didn't have any God in your life, the real you would come up in a moment when they least. See, y'all going to be deep with me. Y'all going to be deep. Can I please get at least seven people who will testify? Thank you, Chris. Can you at least testify that I ain't fully saved yet? I I ain't all the way there yet. I'm still a work in progress. Come on, let's talk about it. I haven't fully arrived yet. I haven't dotted every I yet. I haven't crossed every T. Kiana, we had this conversation last night because some folk need to realize that there is no such thing as a perfect Christian. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm not perfect. I'm working toward perfection I'm in a process of getting there but baby when I get there you ought to look at somebody and tell them when I get there when I get there I'll be able to look at some things and say you know what I'm glad I'm not like I used to be because if I was like I used to be I'd have cussed some folks out I'd have slapped some folk y'all so say can I please get five folk that'll testify some folk ought to be glad you are not like you are you anybody realize that God has changed you in some areas and you have grown in some areas that God has allowed you to see some things and learn from experience that I've been there done that and there's no need to go back there again yeah 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 love protects love teaches me to look past the faults of others love teaches me to be in a situation that I'm going to cover someone in their reproach Instead of publishing their reproaches. Love says that I'm going to follow the teaching of scripture in Matthew 18. Y'all got time? Because Jesus said in Matthew 18, if your brother has gone against you, as he's come against you, if you found your brother in a fault, Matthew 18 teaches me uh, that you go and talk to that brother one-on-one alone. 
Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. Key word there is alone. In other words, you talk to the brother. You don't talk to the brother and then five more. Come on, somebody. The Bible says that when you have talked to that brother, if that brother will hear you, watch the word, you have gained a brother. There is no need to go any further with it because the brother or the sister has seen the error of their ways and realizes that I need to make a change. Is that not word? Is that word? Well, the word says what happens if they don't? Well, if they don't, the Bible says you go back and you get two or three witnesses. And at the mouths of those two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Am I right so far? Am I in the scripture? Well, what happens if that doesn't happen? Well, Jesus said that if that doesn't happen, then you bring it to the church. What are you saying to me, pastor? What I'm trying to say is we got some folks who got it backwards. Preach, JT. They got it backwards because they want to tell everybody else before they talk to the one. And I need to tell you right quick, that's not love that bears all things. True love will pass by injury. True love, come on somebody, will look over injury. True love will put up with injury without anger or revenge. And leave it in the hands of God. Come on, somebody. Boy, that's a good time, isn't it? True love will simply say, I know it ain't right, but who am I to correct it? Uh Uh-oh, I'm about to get in trouble. Because many times we have to be careful how we want to correct folks when we got some faults that ain't come out yet. I'm about to get in trouble, but somebody please help me preach if you know I'm telling the truth. You need to be careful about how you point the finger at folks because watch this just as easy as you point one at somebody you got three of them baby that are pointing right back at you here's the song you don't look down on a man unless you are trying to pick him up amen lights and walls whoo boy it's quiet up in here yeah yeah real love sustains injury it sustains ill will It looks past curses. It looks past slander. It looks past prison. It looks past bond. It looks past torments. And it does not sit back with a plan of revenge. Because real love knows that when you put it in the hand of God, God will deal with it much quicker, much easier, and much faster than you can. Can I tell y'all from experience, and some of you will know it to be true, I have learned the hard way. There are just some folks you can't change. Can I tell y'all from experience, some folks you wish they would just see the truth and just get it right, but the more you try to get them to see it, the more difficult they become. Let me let you on a little secret. You can't change them. But I'm a witness if you will get on your knees and start praying I'm about to help somebody and quit with these little cute and and, and, and dignified prayers some of y'all need to get honest with God and start calling some names in your prayer Lord I need you to bless so and so help so and so to see they not going right and then in the process of that I'm about to get in trouble while you're praying for them whisper a word for yourself Because I got proof in the word of scripture, the book of Galatians. The Bible says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of of meekness. Look at the next verse. Considering yourself. See, true love puts yourself in their position and it says, what would I want done if it were? Yeah, love, love bears all things but the second thing verse 7 said not only does verse 7 say love bears all things watch this love believes all things Mm -hmm. Greek word here pistuo which simply means to be persuaded to take confidence in to put my trust in see watch this true love is the kind of love that entrusts itself to love time and time again y'all ready for this no matter what you've done no matter what folks think you've done 
or even no matter what folks heard you did. True love does not allow, I heard it somewhere in the church, true love doesn't allow rumors and gossip to affect its loving. Now, what I'm saying is going to get all of us because, see, all of us, all we need to do is hear something long enough. And it's something within our DNA. We're too prone to believe it. And can I even tell us from experience, some folks would rather believe a lie in two minutes than they would the truth in 20. I'll be glad to say that again. I heard somebody say, say it again. I'll be glad to. Some folks would rather believe a lie in two minutes than they would the truth in 20. Come on, somebody. There's proof of that in scripture, too. We talked about this Thursday morning Bible study. That's what happened to Adam and Eve in the garden. The devil gave Eve just enough truth to make it convincing. Uh Uh-oh, I'm about to get in trouble. Walk through the garden. God had already given orders. Don't touch that tree of the knowledge of good and evil because the day you touch of it, the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Is that what the Bible said? And the Bible says that when the serpent came through the garden and he approached Eve, I've told y'all this more than once, he approached Eve and he said to Eve, did God not say? Eve said, God said, we may not eat it, neither may we touch it, for the day we eat it or touch it, we will surely die. He put just enough truth in it. To mess her up because the serpent said you won't die. God knows the day you eat of it you will become as gods. Knowing good from evil. He did not lie because the day they ate of it they saw themselves for who they really were. And y'all about to help me because you know it's the truth. That's where it all got started. Sin, disobedience and rebellion all got started in the garden of Eden. Because somebody whispered in their ear it's okay. Can I drop something on us in here? Y'all just missed it, but I'm going to give somebody a chance to holler. That's why some folks are so fickle and funny and phony in this last day. Because somebody has whispered in their ear, it's okay. The message has been sent. It's okay. Am I doing all right in here today? Y'all kind of quiet. Y'all ain't there. Yeah, y'all kind of quiet. I must be hitting kind of hard today. Even when you're in fold. Love says, I still love you. And I love you to a point that I'm not going to destroy you in your wrong. Come on, somebody. True love says, you're wrong. I know you're wrong. But let's work together to make it right. Come on, somebody. True love. Can I help somebody? I'm talking about the love of God. If you really want to see it, look at Jesus. He was hung up for your hang-ups. This man died on a cross and committed no sin. Come on, somebody. He did something that he did not have to do. Why? He was without sin. He had done nothing wrong. The charges that they placed against him were trumped up. Come on, somebody. And then they found an innocent man guilty of a crime he did not commit. But hanging on that cross, While he hung and while he bled, while he died, he uttered the words that set all of us free. He uttered the words, Father, forgive him. And unless I keep us too long, that included us. Anybody glad to know that first and foremost, none of us deserve the right nor the privilege to be sitting here today. Can we be honest with ourselves? Can we really be honest? I don't deserve the right to stand behind this sacred desk and declare God's word. I'm going to go ahead and give it to you straight. If you really want to know the truth, all of us have got some flaws and some failures and some issues and some mistakes. So how dare we look down on one another? All of us have got some things uh, that we're going to stand. I ain't got nobody helping me in here. That we all are going to have to stand before God. So who am I to look down on you when it becomes my responsibility to pray you through it? Uh, It becomes my responsibility responsibility to let you know it ain't right but let's work our way through this no 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 because we got some folk can I tell it like it really is up in here we got some folk in the body of Christ that as soon as they find your failures they find your flaws they find your mistakes they will attempt to use them against you uh, to try to kill your influence to destroy your integrity to try to destroy what you're trying to do I got a word for you sweetheart he that is without sin among you let him 
cast a stone at her. And before you throw that stone, you better take a long look at yourself because ain't nobody, I got some help here, good enough to condemn anybody else. You ought to look at your neighbor and tell them, no, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Here's the third one in verse 7, Chris. Love hopes for all things. Now, now, now hope in the scriptural sense, beloved, simply says that I'm going to maintain an attitude of positivity. I'm going to remain optimistic. The word hope in the biblical sense simply means to wait with confidence and joy. In other words, true love says in spite of what it looks like, in spite of what people say, I'm going to remain positive and full of joy. It's that kind of love that the church of God ought to possess. That, that love that allows people to understand that in spite of folks' flaws, there's some good in everybody. Can I say that one more time? In spite of folks' flaws, there is some good in everybody. And I would that some of y'all, I'm going to give you a good word of advice. I would that some folk would learn to focus more on the good than they do on the bad. I wish more folks would focus on the positives more than the negatives. I would that some folk would learn how to pray for folk instead of talking about them. Because real love says, I'm waiting on you. Real love says that I'm not giving up on you. Real love says that I'm willing to help you even though you failed me ten times before. Can I help somebody? That's what Jesus did. Don't y'all remember Peter? Come on somebody. Oh cussing Peter. Oh lying Peter. Oh swearing Peter. Uh huh. Oh knife packing That's right, he was packing, y'all. He was packing. Knife packing Peter. To the point that when they laid hands on Jesus, what did he do? He grabbed his knife. Come on, somebody. But do you read your Bible? Don't y'all sit say because some of y'all sitting up in here packing. You just don't want nobody else to know it. Hello. Yeah, you packing, and you don't even have to have a gun or a knife. Some of y'all's tongues are packing. Come on, somebody. Some of your thoughts are packing. Hello. Some of your attitudes are packing. How do you know that, Pastor? If looks could kill. I'd be a dead man right now. But this same lying, cussing, swearing, denying Jesus, knife packing Peter stood on the day of Pentecost and preached a word so powerful. Come on, somebody. That after he got through preaching and extended an altar call. Can I put it where y'all can catch it? 3,000 souls were added to the church. What are you saying to me, pastor? I'm trying to tell us God has power. Somebody better holler right there. To take a crooked stick ah, and still hit straight lines. God has power to take you in your mess ups. Can I encourage somebody? And use your mess ups to encourage somebody else. Uh, to understand. And no, I'm not perfect, but the man still loves me. Is there anybody who will get happy and holler back at me real quick that can say, I'm glad he loved me in spite of my mistakes. I'm glad he loved me in spite of my wrongdoing. I'm glad he loved me. Oh, y'all ain't talking. Somebody please get real enough to holler at me and don't care who's sitting next to you because they're about to go to sleep anyway. Wake them up real quick with a good holler and let them know. I'm still here because he looked beyond my fault and still gave me what I needed. Anybody glad about it that he looked past your mistakes and washed them clean and erased the board? Come on, somebody. Moved all of that out of 
out of the way to the point the Bible says as far as the east is from the west he cast our sins from us so it does not come up against us I got good news some folk might bring it up but it's already been erased at the cross of Calvary I said it's been erased it's been clean which says when I confess my sin I'm in the word when I go to God and say I've messed up I've done wrong I didn't do this right the Bible says that when I confess it he is faithful he is just to clean it up anybody glad up in here that he gave you a chance to clean it up to get it right to turn it around so you can move forward Well, I got one more thing I got to tell y'all. Y'all got time for one more? Yeah. Love beareth all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. But then finally, it endures all things. Oh, God help me. Endure. Somebody just shout endure, 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 endure. From the Greek means to tarry. To remain. To stay. It's that power y'all. That allows us to stick with it. No matter what. Let me make it real. Because see some of y'all ain't caught it yet. Let me make it real. Real love lets you stick with folks. Even after they get on your nerves. I wish I had some, some married couples up in here gotta be honest with me yeah yeah you're married yeah you're married but there have been some moments thank you brother Dawkins for testifying there have been some moments in the course of the marriage relationship that you sat back and ask yourself what in the world am I doing here don't, don't, don't say too much because your spouse looking at you don't say too much don't say too much don't say too much but let's be honest Let's be real. There are some folks we've dealt with in our lives that we've wondered, why in the world am I fooling with this one? Mm-hmm. Anybody can remember a relationship you were in and you glad God delivered you from that relationship and now you've grown a little bit and you look back at that relationship and you sit back and ask yourself, what in the world was I doing fooling with that fool? Come on, somebody. Keep it real, Pastor. Keep it real. What was I doing? See, Johnson ain't going to talk about it, but I'm going to tell on him anyway. I know, Johnson, you done fell out with your wife a couple of times. I, no, let me change that. Sister Johnson, I know you done fell out with your husband a couple of times. I know you have. But it's something about love. Come on, somebody that says yeah you get on my nerves yeah you do stuff I don't like yeah you got some stuff you got some issues about you that just irk me but I still love you beside don't issue yeah yeah you squeeze the toothpaste in the middle of the tube instead of the bottom of it but I love you anyway yeah you leave the toilet seat up after you come out the bathroom but I love you anyway yeah you won't wash your own dishes after you eat but I love you anyway yeah I know you stay up and turn the TV up all loud all hours of the night but I love you anyway y'all see my wife jumping that let you know I'm talking about me hello real love real love says you got some stuff that hurt me but I'm staying here can I bring it to the church? Y'all about to get upset. But even in the church, all of us got some stuff that I believe hurt the very power of God. Can I prove it? When you come to church, when you feel like it, when he says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, I believe we irk God. When we sit in church with our arms folded with attitudes. I wish he'd gone and finished so we can go home. My God, don't take all of that. 
when he says enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name you are God we look down on one another mistreat one another and got the nerve to say we're Christians hello somebody when you need to understand that if you are a Christian and I'm a Christian that makes us brothers and sisters in Christ and the last time I checked I thank God for the wisdom of my parents who taught me that family sticks together no matter what no matter what happens in the house whatever happens in the house it stays in the house you don't go outside of the house and tell folk what folk have been doing in the house I'm trying to help somebody some of y'all have been spreading folks names on the signboard of evil if you will stop running your mouths and get on your knees and pray Love endures. Mm -hmm. Love says, in spite of what it looks like, in spite of how bad it is, love says that I'm going to stay there and love you anyway. Can I be honest with y'all in closing? Loving folks is easy. Until they get on your nerves. Huh? Am I right, Brother Lewis? Huh? I ain't talking about your wife. Don't look at me like that. What's Sister Mabel at? I know she in here. Don't, no, uh -uh. Loving folks is easy. Until folks start acting crazy. Uh-huh. Loving so folks is easy until the other person does something offensive or failing. And went crazy. That's what I said. Uh huh. And when folks start acting crazy, that's when your love is tested. Mm hmm. The true measure of your love is tested because true love, real love, God's agape love says no matter how much you've wronged, no matter how much you've messed up, no matter how difficult you can be at times, real love says you're still worth waiting on now somebody needs to look for a moment to holler there it is right there because while all of us may do things that other folk don't agree with the love of God says I ain't running Lord have mercy no matter the mistakes no matter the shortcoming my love for you says I'm going to stay right here and I'm going to wait on you come on somebody Real love says, I ain't quitting at the first sign of trouble. Real love says, separation ain't an option. Quitting is not an option. Defeat is not an option. Real love says, I'm going to hold on. Come on, somebody. And stay with you no matter how bad it gets. You know the wedding vows. Don't act like you don't. In sickness and in health. Come on, somebody. I'm going to love, honor, cherish. Uh-huh. Obey two sisters. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. Why y'all looking at me like that? That's what it says. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. Here's the last one. Till death do us part. And as I close the day, if you want to see love, that's the love that the Lord gives us and that we are challenged to give one another. Because the love of God, can I preach a little bit, says, I promise, God help me here, to love you, to honor you, I promise to sacrifice for you in richness and for poorer, in sickness and in health, in the good times and the bad times. I promise to love you. So much so, Jesus said, greater love hath no man than this. That a man would lay down his life. God help me here. Uh, for his friend. Uh, yeah. You talk about real love. Uh, real love 
sacrifices because Jesus says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish come on somebody but have everlasting life anybody want to know what love is if you want to know what love is I dare you to look at Jesus Jesus said in spite of your sin I love you enough to die for your sin can I got a witness here he loved me enough to look past my mistakes and look past my shortcoming God have mercy and love me anyway now I got the clothes here now but I want to make sure that you understand that when you love God you can't help but love folks let me say that one more time I said when you love God you can't help but love folks because there'll be something on the inside of you that every time you want to give up on him he will remind you I could have given up on you and do I have somebody in here that will testify I'm so glad that he didn't give up on me where you at in here is there somebody in the house that will testify he loved me so much uh, that he was willing to die uh, for my sin. Uh, now that's love right there uh, because as much as some folk love you, uh, I don't know anybody uh, that would be willing to die for you. Uh, I need to talk to some parents here real quick. Is there some parents in the house uh, that will testify I love a lot of folk uh, but I'm not willing to give up my son or my daughter uh, for the sin of the world. Uh, anybody realize that he loved you enough uh, to send his son uh, and the son loved us enough uh, that he gave his life. Uh, Y'all ain't talking to me. Uh, I need somebody that will testify uh, that's real love. Uh, he came uh, through 40 and 2 generations. No. And he walked this earth uh, for 40 and 3 long years. Uh, that's love. Uh, he healed the sick. Come on somebody. Uh, he raised the dead. Uh, that's love. Uh, he took water and turned it into wine. Uh, just to save the spirit of a wedding. Uh, that's love. Uh, Y'all ain't talking to me. Uh, he took spit and dirt. Uh, and laid it on a man's eyes. Uh, that his sight might might be restored. That's love. He hung out with folk like Zacchaeus and had dinner with sinners that the world may know he loved us in spite of our failures. That's love. Can I get somebody that'll testify in here? I'm everything I am because he loved me. And I don't know why the man loved me and I don't know why he even cared I don't know why he sacrificed his life but I'm glad I said I'm glad I'm so glad he did is there anybody that is still saying I want to know what love is I'll tell you what it is he took the cross of yours and mine and went out to a hill called Calvary. That's love. They put nails in his hand. That's love. He put nails in his feet. That's love. They punched a hole in his side. That's love. Crown of thorns on his head. 
that's love. Why is that love? Because while he went through the agony, he was thinking about me when he said, Father, oh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was thinking about me when he told John, Behold your mother, and told Mary, Behold your son. He was thinking about me when the two thieves were hanging on the cross beside him. And one said, If you are who you say you are, save yourself and us too. But the other one said, Father, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Daddy used to say, Jesus, stop dying long enough to say this day, thou shalt be with me in paradise. He did it for me. There is, there is, there is, there is, there is, oh, there is a name I love to hear. The speak is worth it sound like music in my ear the sweetest name on earth can I get somebody to just wave your hand and testify oh how I love Jesus is there anybody that'll get happy in here and can say I love him because he first loved me and he already Right. Ain't he all right? Ain't God, ain't God all right? Yes, he loved me enough to die for me. He loved me enough to go in the grave for me. But early Sunday morning, he got up just for me. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Is there anybody that'll testify in here? <laughs> that because he loves you you are determined to love somebody else I'm determined to pray for you I'm determined to encourage you I'm determined to let you know God loves you and so do I I'm determined to tell a darn word he was hung up for my hang ups he was laid down for my get downs but he got up that I could get up again ain't God alright ain't God alright ain't God alright yes 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 I'm done Lord have mercy I'm done. 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 I want to know. I want to know what love is. I want to know what it look like. I want to know what it feel like. So when I remember everything that he did for me everything he suffered for me I know he bared all things he believed all things he hoped all things he endured all things y'all got a minute cause I got one more thing I got to tell y'all in here the hymn writer put it this way God sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died to buy my pardon and an empty grave is there to prove my savior lives here's what I got to tell you because he lives I 
can face tomorrow because he lives. All my fear is gone because I know he holds the future. Life is worth the living because he lives. Yes, he lives. Yes, he lives. How do you know he lives? Because when I love folk that hate me, that lets me know he's alive and well. Yeah. Doors of the church are open. 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 I don't know why he loved me. I don't know why he can. Doors of the church are open. Will there be one today? I don't know why he sacrificed his life. Oh, but I'm glad, so glad he did. There may be one today who doesn't know him and want to get to know him. You're not saved. You know you're not. You want to be. He loved you.